son's best friend's grandfather. Um, there was just no reason why they wouldn't have called me immediately when I, they found out that Jerry Melberg was was uh, in the hospital after attempted suicide. He was in the hospital for a number of days and nobody told me until his last 10 minutes of his life. Um, when I went to the hospital, um, he had already he had already passed and I was just like, what? Why in the world didn't they tell me this? So let's hold talk. on. Let's cover. Um, oh, you got one let's more. Let's cover. So I have another employee, um, which was Carissa Friend's uh, basics husband. His, his name's Brandon Friend. He has a violent um, attitude. He worked for me once and literally went, when he was working one time, he lost it. He literally was like wanting to beat me up because I just requested that he do a better job on cleaning a garage out. Um, here's what Brandon Friend uh, does. He works at the, Val at the Valdez post office. And I've had mail missing now for two to three years, um, credit card statements, important federal mail from the Forest Service and other agencies. Um, there was a P.O. box right next to my box um, owned by a guy named Mark Kelly as well, a past employee who we found was hacked into our my iCloud account. This is a local post office. I mean, this is the real deal. Um he delivers mail up to 120 miles up out of Valdez, Alaska. Um, there's some pretty serious things that have happened. The Tico Lodge, both owners died of leukemia in a short period of time. Brandon Friend was trying to convince me to buy the Tico because he knew they were on their deathbed and that they would go and help take care of the lodge for me. Um, and then another gentleman by the name of Bill Stevenson, he was a retired... Um, state trooper he literally got destroyed this guy um i went over to his house and i'm like hey i was i was trying to buy his home i wanted to buy his home on the clutina river he had a home that was worth about a million dollars i think he had on the market for nine nine fifty or something i was just beyond my reach i went and checked it out i tried to see if he could give me a better deal or carry the loan and he couldn't and he was awesome, and he went and helped me work on a fish wheel with my children, and he was game on gentleman. Um, I went back to see him again to see if the price had come down on the home, and he was out of sorts. He was out of his mind. He was, hey, what's wrong, Bill? I don't know what's wrong. I can't sleep. I haven't slept for 19 days, he tells me. I'm like, what? So I started thinking about it. I'm like, wow, I got Kyle Yashimoto and Lisa Yashimoto who I know are, were involved with getting opiate medications from um, Providence Medical Center. They had baskets full of empty bottles of opiates. Um, and they were delivering him food and supposedly helping take care of his home. Um, and then I also know that Brandon Friend was delivering um, mail to this person. He ended up selling his home and leaving the state. I think he ended up selling the home for like $300,000. It, it was literally a million dollar home. Um, but suggests some toxins were introduced to be up for uh, 17, 19 days straight. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, uh, you know, uh, stimulants like uh, methamphetamine and, and other um, drugs. Were the bottle, the narcotic bottles empty or did they have something in them? How do you uh, like? Well, Kyle and Lisa, Lisa Yashimoto actually were friends of mine. Um, they owned a fish wheel. And I would go up and I'd get a subsistence fishing permit to go catch a salmon for my family. And I would use their fish wheel. And I one time jumped in the camper that was down by the river and was gonna take a nap because I'd worked all night playing fish. And here's this bottle of opiate pills empty in the bed. And then when I was at their house, um, I was sitting at their kitchen table and there was a whole basket, like probably a foot deep, foot and a half deep basket, 18 inches across. All of the pills, all the empty bottles were opiate bottles. Um, and they came from Valdez Medical Center. I asked Lisa if she knew Kathy Todd, the doctor in Valdez, and she denied she knew her um, and that she did anything with the Valdez Medical Center or Kathy Todd. The strange thing about that was is I had a phone, a flip phone on their kitchen table, and I picked it up. And I opened it up and it was Lisa's and there was two phone calls from Kathy Todd, a nine minute and a 12 minute phone call. And, you know, 20 minutes before that, she's claiming she never deals with Kathy Todd 
at the Valdez Medical Center. I'm like, what are all these bottles and pill bottles from Valdez from? And um, how does this work? So, you know, this thing's a pretty serious situation. And um, Brandon Friend also probably, uh, did he deliver up to Bill Stevens? Mail and stuff. He did, yeah. Okay. So he delivers all the or way Stevenson. up past um, up past uh, uh, Copper Center. Well, so well, let's shift gears just real quick um, on this card. Uh, read it to me. Uh, what does it say? The U.S. Department of Justice Federal Bureau of Investigation Anchorage Field Office. Okay, and um, what's the email on there? The email is Anchorage FBI at ak dot net. Okay. Uh, the address looks appropriate, but definitely a fake uh, email that was set up by someone. Um, who who uh, gave that card to you and where? So I went to the Federal Bureau of Investigations at the uh, main headquarters in Anchorage, Alaska to meet with a federal agent regarding these situations that I've um, uncovered and had proof of. And um, literally the security guys there were you know, just very unprofessional, um, almost seemed to be playing me. Um, the first two times I showed up, they wouldn't let me meet with an agent. The other, so the third time I showed up, they did say I could meet with an agent. I went through the whole screening process. They obtain, obtained my phone, which was kind of weird. Um, and then I went through the x-ray machines. Um, I waited for over an hour, probably 45 minutes to an hour for an agent to come down. And an agent came down and he basically was, I mean, even after I explained to him that my son had been um, exposed to toxins that hurt his liver and his, hurt his, his health, um, the guy literally had a, a smirk on his face. Um, I explained to him all the things that were happening in Valdez with the mortgages and the banks, um, the phone company, um, um, the hacking, everything. And he basically told me there's nothing they could do for me. Um, he told me, here's my card. If you have any different, any additional information, send it to this email address. And that was this card right here. And that was behind security in a secure room. Um, you know, it was past the original wall and everything you met with this gentleman. Um, you, uh, we were able to kind of look, um, and who was the, uh, that registered uh, email? Do you remember the person that it was? David Blankenship is who, That's right. who had uh, been reported uh, to register that email. Um, I don't know if there's any relation to the other Blankenships, but it looks like he's a facilities director or facilities manager at that FBI office. So one would assume that he either made a mistake and actually did register that address or that someone made it look like he registered the address. But either way, it's someone obviously inside Anchorage FBI um, headquarters there, right? That's right. Um, he did have that pretty strong look of FLDS. Um, the one thing I've noticed about some of these, these uh, LDS, I would say, I couldn't call them LDS, but FLDS, is if they have a wedding ring, it's generally not metal. It's generally uh, made out of bone or ivory or something. And they always seem to have a bracelet as well on their left wrist. Um, yeah, it, what it appears um, to have been is that the security guys literally are infiltrating the FBI building and screening people that are coming in. And if people are coming in, um, sharing this massive concern,